whether you're mapping a construction site, capturing breathtaking landscapes, or working with LiDAR data. There are mistakes you can make that can cost you time, money, and leave your clients unsatisfied. Most drone pilots learn these the hard way, but make sure to stay until the end of this video to make sure you don't have to. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen new pilots make is that they try to plan out everything while in the field. Not only does this waste time, but this also increases the chances of errors. Pre-planning allows you to think through all the aspects of the project, such as number of routes needed, number of battery sets needed, the best takeoff spot, and it also allows you to research about other things, such as specific airspace restrictions, weather conditions on that day, and other specifics, such as what risks you might be facing when flying at a specific location. Think of it like a road trip. Do you just start driving, or do you first map out the best route to get you to your destination? Professional software like UGCS allows you to create precise flight paths, set waypoints, and configure camera angles before even stepping into the field. This is essential for commercial work, such as surveys, mapping, or inspections, where accuracy is non-negotiable. But just planning the flight in the office often is not enough. Imagine you reach the location only to find out that the mobile network there is weak and your software actually can't launch the drone simply because there is no internet connectivity. That's why it's essential you download the maps and elevation for offline use, because this ensures that even if there's no internet connectivity or very limited cellular coverage, you'll still be able to launch your drone and adjust your missions while in the field. Another important habit you should develop is using the right elevation model. Very often, terrain models in drone flight planning software are with a resolution of 30 meters. This means that there's a distance of 30 meters between two consecutive elevation points. This might be okay for general surveying purposes. However, if you want to do really high precision work, then you can look into getting higher resolution elevation models. Many governments, including the USA and European governments, offer their own uh, public elevation sources where you can get data sets with resolution as high as one meter. And so you can just take those one meter digital elevation models, load into flight planning software like UGCS, and you'll be good to go and will be able to capture very high resolution data. However, accurate flight height does not always mean accurate data, especially when flying with LiDAR. Many pilots who fly with LiDAR do the IMU calibrations manually which might work in some cases, but might lead to horrible results in some others. It's always best to automate the IMU calibrations whenever you can. And that's why I recommend using software that allows you to automate IMU calibrations to make sure you don't forget to do that and give you consistent and good quality results. So now, when we are ready to fly, a question arises. How well can the drone follow the terrain? Many drones have terrain following features. But the default settings are not always ideal, especially in hilly or mountainous regions. If your drone does not follow the terrain closely enough, you might end up flying too high, thus reducing the image resolution. If it follows too aggressively and flies too low, you can risk sudden altitude changes that could even lead to unstable footage or even crashes in the worst scenarios. Mastering the terrain following means smoother flights and way better data. Tools such as Smart AGL trajectory smoothing and custom elevation profiles in UGCS lets you fine-tune exactly how your drone handles different elevation changes. And this is essential for topographic surveys, precision agriculture, and construction monitoring, where data accuracy depends on stable altitude levels. We have a separate video on all drone terrain following secrets, so make sure to check it out right here. And the worst feeling? Coming back from a long day of flying only to realize there are gaps in your data. Maybe some images are out of focus, an SD card malfunction, or some area was not covered. The best time to catch these mistakes is while you are in the field, not back in the office. Every time you swap a battery, take a minute to review the captured images, check for sharpness, alignment, and full coverage of your survey area. And if something looks off, you can fix it on site instead of having to come back another day. And trust me, spending 60 seconds to check your data can save you hours of driving back and recapturing it. And speaking of swapping batteries, Consider battery hot swapping. What is it, you might ask? Instead of shutting down the drone completely, you can replace one battery at a time while keeping the system powered on. This means no waiting for the drone to reboot, no reconnecting to GPS, and no reinitializing all sensors. But keep in mind that this works only for drones that use multiple batteries, such as the M300, M350, and others. Less downtime equals more flight time. Simple as that. If you're flying with RTK for high precision mapping, this is even more important. 
Hot swapping prevents you from losing your RTK fix, which can take minutes to re-establish. If your drone supports dual batteries, it probably also can do hot swapping, and take advantage of that. But what you should not take advantage of is using just a single SD card to store all your precious data. Your flight data is valuable, so treat it that way. SD cards fail, laptops crash, and unexpected accidents can happen. That's why the golden rule of data storage is, if you don't have data in at least two places, you don't have it at all. At the end of every flight, copy the data from the SD card to your computer, external SSD, or cloud storage. This one small habit can save you from catastrophic data loss. Now that you have captured large amounts of data and backed it all up, where do you find something in this mess? If you fly multiple projects, keeping things organized is crucial. Instead of saving random root files, structure your missions by project name, date, and location. EGCS lets you store and export missions efficiently, so you can refly the same route later. This is ideal for monitoring progress over time, which can be a requirement in fields such as construction or agriculture. So if you ever need to return to recollect data, you will have the exact same route and you won't have to replan it. And this can be used, for example, to survey an ongoing construction site from the same positions, making it easy to track progress and save time. Just go to the field, launch the drone, collect data, collect money. And lastly, what if something serious happens and you need to access flight logs? Should you keep them and where? Flight logs, they're not just for troubleshooting. They're often essential for regulatory compliance and fleet management. Some regulators require pilots to keep a very detailed flight records. EGCS automatically records telemetry data, which can be exported for analysis or legal documentation. So if you're flying commercially, Having these logs can help protect you in cases of disputes or audits. Implementing these pro tips will help you level up your game. But wait, there is one more really important rule that might be even more crucial than everything we've mentioned in the video so far. So make sure to watch this video now to know how to save your drone in the future. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more cool drone content. And try out our professional flight planning software, UGCS, with 14-day free trial. So see ya and goodbye.